And I am here with another central banker having the important conversations about the economy. Jacob Frankel joins me, the chairman of J.P. Morgan Chase International, also a leader of G30 and the former Bank of Israel governor, a Davos veteran. How many years now? This is number 33. <laughs> number 33. <laughs> so, you know, there's always a topic of conversation around climate this year and ESG and also negative interest rates. You were so early in warning about the negative consequences of low and negative rates. It seems like the, everyone else has caught up to you now. So what's your biggest takeaway about what you've been hearing? Well, it's a major issue. And the reason why it is a major issue is that negative interest rates or low interest rates have done their job very well when the crisis, financial crisis, was at its highest. It was important to extinguish the fire. But it's clearly a distortion. It's abnormal. It's abnormal because it diverts resources to the financial industry instead of being invested in plant and equipment. It encourages people to take more risk by they search for greater yield. It weakens the financial industry. Look at the pension system, at the insure life insurance. So by and large, it represents a fundamental imbalance. And it is a result of something which is called the only game in town. Monetary policy being a very active policy instrument has become the only game in town for too long. Now, the important thing is the solution has to come through other policy instruments, whether it is fiscal policy, whether it is what we call structural policies, those policies that remove distortions, including open markets. And uh, one of the dangers today to the economic performance of the world comes from fragmentation. Too many countries see internal fragmentation, significant number of people who feel themselves that the system have, has not served them well. And as a result, it is always we versus them, yeah, us versus populism. them. And the issue of the trade is mm -hmm. the most important issue well, today. We'll get to that in a moment, but just Please. on this negative rate debate, clearly people are worried about it. But the question is, what else is there? And what happens if we do go into an economic downturn, a recession, if things get worse in Europe for Brexit? Do central bankers have any policy tools left? Well, that's one of the important points. On the one hand, there is a gallery of policy instruments, whether it is in principle interest rates, guidance, macro prudential, what we call of these kind of policies. But there is no question in my mind that the most important and potent policy instrument of central banks is the interest rate. So if you push it too close to zero, you have very little room to go if the need arises. This is another reason why we should really prepare for the next crisis. And I don't see one coming. By the way, we have had a long-term recovery. Financial industry is much stronger than what it used to be. Banks have more liquidity, less leverage. Banks have more capital. So by and large, mm -hmm. This is the time to bring towards normalcy Normalize. and bring greater balance, the word balance, to the policy, to the instruments of economic policy. Trade. We've had two deals signed, phase one of U.S.-China, U.S.-MCA. How much uncertainty do you think that eliminates from the system? It reduces the uncertainty, but there is still a long way to go. Uh, but you, you, we must understand the two most important countries or economies in the world are China and the United States. When there is a sign of friction, immediately the market gets very unsettled. It is like the two co-pilots of a plane are fighting with each other when we are sitting there in the seats. What would you expect us to think when we are sitting there listening through the microphone about the fighting? We will sit on our hands. We may pray, but we definitely will not plan on our next investments. We want the dust to settle. That's why the degree of uncertainty is so important to be removed. And therefore, it's nice to celebrate phase one, but it is essential to focus now on phase two. Since you predicted the negative rate debate, when we sit here in a year from now, what will we be talking about as it relates to the global economy? I think the global economy uh, will... I do not see a recession coming. There is no question that growth is somewhat below what we would like it to be, but it is better than what we feared it to be. Jacob Frankel, thank you.